Hello everyone, welcome to Abundant Soulpreneurs. Here we are, I'm so excited to be here with Nalini from Chalice of Wisdom. And we were having a fascinating conversation last week and I thought this would make a great conversation to share with you here today. So welcome Nalini. Hello, it's nice to see you. Yay! Yeah, I, you know, with so many energies being activated at the moment and so many shifts happening and so much going on, there is also a lot of different talk and different interpretations around yeah. awakening and awakening seems to be like a hot topic right now everybody's talking about high vibes awakening all of that stuff i would love to hear from your perspective how do you recognize a true awakening well well partly that it depends on what your definition is actually a lot on what your definition is because there are awakenings which the whole planet is having right now everyone is having them even um you know people you might not think are having them they are and then there's enlightenment and there's everything that that has has had projected onto it uh, most of which is wrong <laughs> you know but um a true awakening doesn't go away um what I would call a true awakening. Now, somebody else might disagree with that definition, but you have an awakening. It could simply be the kind of awakening where you realize that your lifestyle needs to change. You know, people have an awakening after they get a diagnosis of even a heart failure, you know, and then all of a sudden they kind of wake up to the fact that they might have been mistreating their body, okay, and they, they change. It can be as simple as that, but then... The advanced stages of awakening, which is what you and I were talking about last week, where you are not awakening, you are awakened. Um, that, per, that persists. And there's a radiance that comes into the aura, the field, and the body. And there's a certain quality of transmission of energy that is always present, even when that being is having a bad day. <laughs> You know, because I mean, people think that enlightened beings don't have bad days. So not true. Um, you know, it's the, it's the planet. You know, it's that we all navigate the planet, right? And we have physical bodies, and we navigate from within them. So there's always this stuff going on. But the way you recognize a true awakening is by the transmission. It's by the energy. It's by how clean and clear and pure and innocent almost, and it just that it feels. It's mostly this. It's that clean transmission. And if you, it feels a little bit filtered, which it almost always has to be. We all perceive through our own filters, our own lenses of perception. Um, but if it feels a little funny to you, it might be that it doesn't resonate with you, mm -hmm. you know, or it, and that's fine. I mean, it's why there are so many awakenings now is because there are going to be all kinds of fields of resonance. And one thing will resonate with one person, another will resonate with another. We all hear truth differently. But the way you, you feel something that's true is it's solid. It's a clean, clear transmission, and it's constant. Now, it will upgrade and change, but it, it doesn't go away. It doesn't fluctuate. And you don't get that little tinge of sort of um, egoic essence in it. You know, and it's, it's really it's difficult to put that into words. It's a feeling. It's like you know when someone is speaking through one of their egoic filters. You just know. It's like that's an opinion, not a transmission. There's a difference in how it feels, how we perceive it. So the way to, to know a true awakening or a true transmission, because uh, that can come through anyone at any time too, you know, um, is by the way it feels, the, the clarity, the purity that comes through it and the way that the language as well. I mean, some of us, I tend to be very irreverent in my language sometimes, um, usually just because it's good to make people laugh. But also there's a, not an all pious and sanctimonious, I mean, that stuff really, that just has to go. I mean, respect is one thing. Um, source really is upsurging the waves of tenderness and respect on the planet for, for nature, for the planet herself, and for source, for the light that we all are. So there's a certain quality to the transmission that, and the words that, that come through, regardless of what they might be 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, when, would you say that there can, there was obviously awakenings on many, many levels, but yes. that for it to really be fully integrated or embodied that the body has to go through many different phases of awakening. Yes. <laughs> Mine certainly has. Um, yes. It's this, this incarnation, we are all here to bring the light through the body. This is about, um, if, if we use the word enlightenment, I, it's another, it's a, it's a word like God that I don't tend to use a lot just because so many people have so many projections and definitions on it. You now, I mean, we all know what we're talking about, but um, there are just so many things that will come in on that. Um, that needs to move through the physical embodiment this time. That hasn't been done on this world yet before, but by very few individual avatars have done this, but it, the light has to, has to move through the body. The awakening has to move through the body. So yes, the physical body goes through these upgrades. There's a new, um, relatively new science called biophotonics where the scientists are, are studying the light that actually emanates from the cells of our body, from our physical cells. They're finally acknowledging that we are made of light. It's wonderful. Yeah. And of course, this is um, where all of the new medicine comes from, the laser medicine, the light therapies, which are wonderful. You know, and eventually we'll be able to do that without the machines. You know, I don't know if we'll live, you and I will live to see it or not, but it, it's coming. Um, so yes, the body goes through lots of different changes. It will go through changes uh, where a certain diet or a certain type of input will work for a while, and then it doesn't. And then all of a sudden everything changes. Um, I don't talk about like food allergies as much as I talk about sensitivities because they change so radically. You know, if you get an idea in your head, well, I have an allergy to this. Now, some of them are actually quite you know, involved with the physiology, you could say that they're real, you know, but um, also what happens is the body gets sensitized to something. And then as the light comes through and your cells change, that changes too. So you might be sensitive to one thing at one point and something else another time. And that has to do with the environment that you're sensitive to as well. The body goes through periods of incredible sensitivity where it's really hard to be around anyone or anything. And then a week later or a month later or a year later, you can go to a warehouse store. Not that, you know, we enjoy that. But if you need to do that, and it doesn't bother you, you know, it might not be your favorite thing, but it won't, it won't have the same impact. So, yeah, we're, our bodies are shifting and changing all the time. It's really important to remember that. They're not static. Yeah. And I think one of the other things, too, that we talked about many times, but you – really said something last week when we were talking about it, it was so good to be reminded of that I just want to share it here again <laughs> is that I don't know about those watching but I can be pretty impatient sometimes you know it's like once I have an awareness of something then like, okay right now that I know what it is let's just press the control alt delete button and be done with it right and it's like get this work. off me yes yeah, so get it out of my sometimes. body <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Gosh, I've never felt it. <laughs> <I know. laughs> like, yeah. So over and over for years, you know. But um yeah. it's unkind. I mean what you and I were talking about is that is really unkind to our bodies. And we are moving into a cycle where kindness needs to be recognized again. Kindness to ourselves, kindness to nature, kindness to one another, just kindness as a common courtesy. So um, well, I used to find a big gnarly program and I might walk, you know, spend two weeks. Gosh, I used gnarly. Weird. Um, <laughs> just heard myself say that. Um, I might spend two weeks really working on it and really digging in and finding every nuance of it. And then, okay, ready to delete it. And then I would learn to watch how source would work with my body to shift and clear it. And that some of it would need to clear in levels and in pieces because to clear it all at once would have made me really ill. The body would have gone into this detox that it just would have been really hard to handle, especially if I'm trying to be functional in the world. You know? So one of the things we can give our bodies permission and the instruction to detox as much of our patterns and programs at the vibrational, at the energy level as they can. And we have to keep reminding them because as we go into deeper and deeper levels of the body, those levels might not have heard that yet. 
or might be so entrenched in a pattern that it's like, oh, okay, now I have to detox this. Well, yes, probably, but it can be done at the vibrational, at the energy level, at very high percentages so that we don't become ill. It's not as hard on the body. We don't have a healing crisis, you know? I mean, I've had my share of them, but it's, it's much nicer to be kind to the body. You know, where part of us will say, I'm impatient, and then the other part of us will say, well, you know, I can't do that. I was just thinking of, you had also mentioned how, um, about Adyashanti, I think one of the yeah. misconceptions that many have, it's like, wow, if someone is awakened, if someone is enlightened, then surely they don't get, and fill in the blank. They don't feel pain. They can rise above the, the, the seminar that I heard, because I, I admire Adya. His teachings are very clean. And he tells it like it is about enlightenment. And very few do, I mean, really, what the process is afterwards. Um, but he was, talking, he was talking about his cancer and the hospital experience. And the student sort of did the pious thing and said, oh, well, you know, surely with your enlightenment, you could just rise above all that. And Anya looked at the guy and said, no. You know, the only thing that got me through it was Mukti being there as his wife, was, you know, having someone there to hold on to. Like, you don't become enlightened and transcend all of the pain and the challenges of life. You have a different centeredness and a different peace and a different way of going through it. But things like physical challenges, no, they are physical challenges. We have bodies. So it's not this sort of big, you know, bliss bunny hop into the sky where all of a sudden everything is wonderful. It is, but in, in a different way, mm. you know, life goes on. Thing. Yes. What is it that saying again? Before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, After enlightenment chop wood, carry water. It's a Zen saying. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much the story is, you know, walking along with a bucket, putting the bucket down, becoming awake, and then picking the bucket back up. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah. You know, we're meant to have that light, that awakening, that awareness in our bodies and in our lives. Yeah. Inside, so there aren't enough caves to go around anymore. So. <laughs> yeah, getting busy. <laughs> then, then the other thing then is is I can say since you know the various stages and everything of awakening, um, what can support someone while they're going through that phase? Oh, we got a little. <laughs> well, hello. Hello. Say hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the various phases, right? So it's like I, um, somebody can say, well, they've had an awakening, but just because they've had an awakening doesn't mean that they're awake. They go through. Like, oh, gosh, no. Yeah. Oh, gosh, no. No. I mean, no, not at all. And in, this, in the serious traditions, you know, the, the enlightenment traditions, they'll tell you that. They'll, you know, that's just part of the teaching. Everyone knows that. You can have an awakening. You can have a satori. You can go into samadhi. But that doesn't enlightenment make. You know, that, that's, it's, you've had a flash, like an epiphany, and then you, you learn to entrain your vibration to that level. Um, no, not, not people have these flashes, and uh, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you are a weekend. You know, it's not a constant and ever-evolving state within you yet. Yeah. Yeah. So what would be some practices that you recommend to support those who are going through this journey with intention, conscious desire to awaken, to fully embody their light? Wow. Oh, there's so many. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> meditation is one. And not, the, not necessarily the classical form. I know I use that word even my own students, and they go, oh, you know. <laughs> It can be you know, two to seven to ten minutes if you're really in that clean, clear space. Now, a true meditative state isn't just relaxation. It isn't just being quiet. But what serves our awakening process is learning to become the stillness. And there are many, many, many techniques for that. You know, it's like find one that works and practice it every day, basically. You know, um, movement yoga, tai chi, qigong, walking, swimming, you know, 
cycling sometimes. It depends. Um, something that's a little gentler on the body because as you start to awaken, your body shifts and changes, and so does your coordination. And so it's, it's good to, to give your body something that works with that, replenishes and builds your energy. It's not to say that other types of movement aren't good. I just like the movement arts because they tend to support the body. You know, that, that's what you would want to do. And then also, um, use your healers. I mean, there are so many amazing healers now. I mean, really amazing beings who can assist at the vibrational level, the energy level, and really work within the physical body to correct what has just been a longstanding pattern. And so it changed into, it became a dis- what we call disease. And there's there use your healers, you know, don't skimp on that. I know one of the things that, that I used to encounter over the years is healers by and large are not covered by people's insurance. And this is something that needs to change on the planet. Yeah, you know, we pay these vast sums of money, varies country to country, for chemicals, carpentry, you know, and that kind of, you know, intervention. And those things have their place, right? Chemicals cutting in carpentry is usually the way I put it. But, um, you know, those things have those their place, absolutely. But it, it, we're going to see a change where as we start to work with natural remedies and work with our healers, those systems are going to have to change. Yeah, that's really mm-hmm. interesting because in many countries, what's been happening is that, as you know, is that they actually, the insurance companies have cut back on the things they cover. So things like homeopathy yes. or naturopathy or you know, many of the natural therapies are no longer covered. And in I, fact, yeah, I was talking to a girlfriend in, in the Netherlands and she was saying since a few years, in homeopathy you can't even find information on what the homeopathic remedies are for on dutch sites anyway i'm like oh my mm-hmm. gosh you know Talk yeah about and pressing it yeah some places you can't even get the supplements mm. the natural supplements you know unless you know how to go and forage for them yourself but you can't purchase them it's mm. it's really sad i mean we all know what it is it's the systems trying to force everyone to stay sick because that makes them money but you know, this, we'll see that this changes the more we start to carry within us that respect for nature, that reverence for what she provides to keep us healthy. You know, there's a cure in nature for everything that came from nature. You know, the other stuff, well, you know. <laughs> but as we learn to remember that wisdom, this, this will change. So that's one thing It's just, you know keep in touch with your healing techniques, body work, anything like that, that, that supports the body's process. And don't, you know, the minute you have a symptom, this is something I see even in my students all the time. The minute you have a symptom, it's like, Oh, I need to run to the doctor. Well, what if you didn't, what if you meditated? What if you used one of your processing techniques, cleared the source of it and then wait and see even for 24 hours or something, unless it's, serious i mean you know if it's an emergency for goodness sake you know go to casualty but um wait a little bit and see because the body really is intelligence life is intelligence and these things these things will shift and clear as we go through the process you know we can have what people call ascension symptoms where you'll have this immune or autoimmune system stuff going on or you'll have you know pains that migrate through your body it's it's your body shifting and changing at, if you're in the awakening process, it's not, there's nothing wrong by yeah, and large. I think that that's an interesting thing too, because oftentimes <laughs> you know, when these, when these energy patterns are leaving, or it's like, you know, you're, you're folk, let's say for example, somebody is choosing to tune into joy more, or they're choosing to tune into peace more, then mm-hmm. obviously everything which is not that has to vibrate out because it can't exist in the same place so yes. then there's the habit of being so used to functioning at the other frequencies the worry yeah. and the anxiety yeah. and all of that and then that's what's broadcast all around so mm. things like meditation and time in nature will help to stay staying away from the news yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> you know 
we talk about a broadcast of toxicity. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So yeah. then the other, one last thing that I thought was interesting you mentioned, saying well that awakenings can happen to anybody, and that brings up a really good point because often you know, sometimes people may not even be aware that they've had an awakening. Most people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or they wouldn't call it that. They'll they'll they say I've had a wake up call or something like that. You know, certain thing in their life. Well. That is a vibrational awakening. It's not what's called enlightenment, but it, it is a vibrational upgrade. You know? So what do you say is the difference then between awakening and enlightenment? Because I think that those terms do get into mm. a lot, and then people think they're saying one thing, but they're actually not. <laughs> well, that happens with most things, don't you find? <laughs> <laughs> the difference between awakening and enlightenment, the way that I was taught about enlightenment, because really... With every tradition, there are variations on this, right? But um, it has to do mostly with the level of egoic dissolution. Like how much ego have you dissolved? Now, as we are bringing the light through the body, you know, in in old school, old cycle enlightenment, uh, the person would, the avatar would become enlightened and then spend a few years teaching and then drop the body. And whatever was left of the ego went with it. Mm -hmm. Ego and body are intimately connected um but because we're bringing light through the body in this incarnation the process is a bit different so someone can have an awakening like the wake-up call after a medical emergency or something like that and and if they are also having awakenings through their awareness and on an enlightened path or or a light bringing path that wake-up call in the body can contribute to their their full awakening you know it's it's literally a wake-up call from source right you know, the way she the way she describes this to me is that what i call an awakening is that that opening that blooming of the flower that opening of the heart and then then it's it's sort of then what do you do with it right you know there's that saying when you know better you do better and you know yeah we we, we aspire to that yeah. um, but <laughs> When an awakening, when enough awakenings happen, there's a constant state, which constant's a weird word to use because it's ever evolving and changing, but but there's it's like there's a level you don't you don't bounce down anymore. It's if the, the ebb and flow across the shore kind of more of it stays mm-hmm. one way or the other, and more of it stays within the infinite sea. So there's less ego or less of what you might call you, the person that comes back kind of after the larger awakenings that precede what's called enlightenment or even after awakening the big one, the enlightenment one, um, just to use that word, there's still more, you know, Mm -hmm. there's still more to work with the ego. Now, because we're bringing the light through the body, I, my experience is that we're not going to completely dissolve the ego. It's not your enemy, never has been. It's actually a survival program meant to help you function in the world. And, you know, you set it up, you can redesign it. And it's, it's better to sort of work with it as an ally, but you make it very transparent. You know, we were talking earlier about clarity, purity, innocence. The ego becomes that. So basically, when you have enough awakenings, or a really big one, that brings you into a new state of being, you become that state then those are the doorways. Those are the gates to enlightenment. Right. You know, you don't go back. There's nothing to go back to. That that person, that being dissolves mm. and goes away. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have these really weird experiences, like you look at your driving license and you think, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> those of you who are awake out there, you know what I mean. It's like you look at that and think, what? Or like I went, at one point I went through a phase where being called by my given name, which, I mean, it is a common name. So, you know, there could be 12 of us in a room at any given time, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't answer to it because it, it made no sense. And then eventually, you know, that integrates, like it does become practical. You don't become just this cave dwelling bliss bunny. Not anymore. Not when we're bringing it through embodiment. You know, all of life is sacred and it's time that that's remembered on this planet. So, yeah, that's great. So juicy conversation. So to be kind, that's, I love how that really, 
that is kind. so important. And I think that, you know, the whole, the old systems and the programming and condition has been so deeply ingrained, all that God programming, you know, that there's a judging God, well, it's not kind. So having to ditch all of that, and even when we get yeah. at a conscious level, it may not be removed from the body or the unconscious level. Well, that's it. That's it. And one of the phases of awakening, since you were asking about that, that you go through is you, you become awake or if you want to call it enlightened in your awareness and your consciousness but it hasn't gone all the way through your body yet and that can be a little strange because your processing tools work differently because you you might have something that you're exhibiting symptoms or you're feeling something a feeling or an emotion or a thought that's running through you and yet your awareness is saying i don't know what that is i can't relate to that i'm kind of in peace and there's love emanating from my heart and I'm good but there's something going on in your field and it's this odd you know dichotomy and so it's learning to process that through the body without getting impatient with it because that's just ego yeah. and without um, being upset by it because that's just ego it shows you where oh you have ego left in your body you know where the light could could come in and take care of that and being kind about it to your body say oh you're still holding a pattern or a program okay let's talk about that let's show me what that is and why don't we have source come into the body not i'm offloading it right you know i'm bailing right but why don't we have source come into the body and replace that shift it dissolve that and change it you know it's 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 a much more sustainable way to work with awakening at least yeah. in my experience beautiful oh well, for everyone who's watching this and who may have some questions or is curious or wants to dive deeper, then go check out chaliceofwisdom.com and you will find some amazing resources there. And Mimi offers beautiful classes and um, a membership program and there are retreats and there are all kinds of different ways that having the support of someone, I was saying this to someone the other day, I mean, we met over 10 years ago I remember 10 now. years ago now I know. that went quickly <laughs> I <know. laughs> and I remember at the time I think we, the first time I had an experience experience a session with you uh, you had mentioned something or another about that the, the um, whole brain functioning this process was oh, yeah. about eight to ten years and I was like oh for God's sake <laughs> Just I don't have that kind of time well <laughs> What else do you have to do with your incarnation, really? I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, why I'm sharing that is because oftentimes we, you know, we can think, oh, you have, you know, you have one or two sessions with someone. This is, you know, being committed to really that egoic dissolution and really choosing to let the light come through fully. Having support on the journey is just so helpful, and I, you know, I love having my support with you. And so, for anyone who's feeling drawn, yeah, then go check out chaliceofwisdom.com. Is there anything else that you would like to share to wrap up our juicy conversation here today? Oh my gosh, I don't know. There's so many things we could talk about. But just that that idea that there's this this resurgence, this upwelling of tenderness and respect and kindness that's coming in. It really is an upwelling of what we have called the divine feminine, but really is source, the source that's the creatrix of us all. And it's a, a rebalancing and a reset for the planet. So, and it's coming through us. It comes through the natural world, but it comes through us. So, you know, spend time in nature, spend time with yourself and, and be kind. Mm, beautiful. Well, until we meet again, many joyful blessings. And for everyone watching, have a wonderful day. Be kind to yourself, be kind to each other. And Check out the resources at chaliceofwisdom.com. Until the next time. Thank you, Tina. You're welcome. <laughs>